many lines of therapy do your ovarian cancer patients get these days? So I live in a different world of clinical trials, so I have patients who are fifth, sixth, seventh line mm -hmm. therapy and oh, beyond. Yeah. You know, they just and then you have unfortunately folks that have a much shorter disease trajectory, not because we've had fewer options for them, but just their disease for some series of reasons just didn't respond. But mm -hmm. so I can go, you know, bevacizumab, resistant disease is second and third, platinum sensitive it's third, I got a lapper of fourth line and beyond. How do I figure out how to treat my patient fifth line? Well, these are like different can, populations, though. So no, you're likely it. not going to dial up. I can't dial up the NCCN guidelines and say, okay, this is fifth line therapy, this is sixth line. Brad, How do I figure it that's out? where the art of medicine comes oh. in. Yeah, yeah. But I only see two ovarian cancer patients a year, so <laughs> I <I'm> always. <laughs> that's right. So again, again, stay <laughs> home more often. <laughs> They're in your office. They're just yeah, waiting. You just don't know it. <laughs> so, but I think, but again, this is how you, how do we guide clinicians on how to make the best treatment right. decisions? Thank you. Give us some. So, well, I mean, I, I don't know. Angels was answering. Well, I, I just think you, you have to take all things into context. And one of the important aspects here, and you keep driving point this point home, is the platinum free interval. And it exists on a continuum. I've had yes. patients who would mm -hmm. be platinum resistant based on the definitions. And the original definition, right, was based on clinical evident disease, not CA125. Right. You know, it was imaging and, and clinical evident disease. And, and I think um, people give up on reintroduction of platinum too early because of these right. um, categories. Well, thank you for that. So, and you know, I, I do reintroduce platinum, especially if somebody did respond mm -hmm. pretty profoundly yep. initially, even if they recurred within three months, I'll reintroduce it. Especially now that we have actually one maintenance agent, be um, bevacizumab, right. and, and potentially a second uh, next year, if depending on what the FDA decides about neriparib, we have options for those patients. Correct. I totally agree with you. Put them back on platinum, get them to respond again, and, and then, then our again. practice is sort of to stop after six to eight which um, some people agree with and some people don't, but you have something now that you can actually put them on mm -hmm. so instead Brad, of just stopping and letting them recur. Right. Can we talk about these different drugs and let's We're come gonna, back and let's, answer let's, that let's question. Talk, because, let's finish yeah. the bevacizumab discussion. Okay. December 6th, we got another label of bevacizumab, platinum sensitive relapse disease, second line. Mm -hmm. Rob, thank you. You're the PI at GOG 213. Summarize that study. That study has not yet been published, although the publication is imminent. Summarize that now new FDA approved indication of bevacizumab. Yeah. So thank you, and I have to uh, congratulate all of the patients that participated in the trial and all the investigators. It took us 10 years to get to this point, uh, and the trial still is ongoing with regard to surgery, and we can talk about that later if we have time. But so this was a trial that was set up to address uh, a, a question for overall survival because we felt that was important in this in this uh, patient population, and we randomized patients to platinum versus platinum and bevacizumab, and, and at the way the trial was set up is there was an allowance for surgery if it was felt to be, if the patients were felt to be amenable. So that turned out to be about 15% of the patients. Also during the context of, context of the trial um, enrollment time period, they were able to be exposed to bevacizumab. About 10% of the patients in both arms of the trial were actually exposed to bev prior, prior to mm -hmm. going on to study. So the, the eligibility criteria required a six-month treatment-free interval from the platinum. So those that were on maintenance, bevacizumab, just had to have a short time off before they could be reconsidered. And so, um, you know, we were very pleased to see that, um, like most of the other uh, trials looking at anti-angiogenesis therapies, that we saw a very strong effect on progression-free survival, um, hazard ratio about 0.6, three months on the median. But most importantly, it was, it was in the overall survival. And uh, we saw about a five month on the median gain. Um, and it was actually a, a, as an absolute value among the high, longest uh, or largest uh, OS survivorships we've seen, about 42 months in the experimental arm, 37 in the, in the control arm. And so um, the hazard ratio for overall survival is a two-tailed test in that study, um, was right up around the 1.0 as the upper limit. There was some nuances that are in the actual FDA announcement that talk about the misclassification for the progression-free survival, as, which was a stratification variable. Um, and so when those were corrected, we actually saw that the overall survival was statistically significant as well. So if I heard you right, the PFS improvement was shorter than the OS improvement? Yeah, isn't that interesting? I know so, it is. So, so one of the why, things. How, how's that possible? So, um, well, it can be possible. We've seen it in, in multiple other trials, even today, and certainly we've seen it in the cases of immunotherapies, even more so. But we'll, and we'll get into that. So, um, you know, I think what it gets to is is um, is that these patients um, 
who demonstrate their response. They were on bevacizumab into progression, and so there are many patients still on bevacizumab maintenance. maintenance. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So Tom, the the and I've highlighted GOG two thirteen again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But it's now the we have a fifth chemotherapy backbone with Bev. So mm -hmm. we say, oh, we can use Bev in recurrent disease, platinum resistant, platinum sensitive. That's true. But the chemotherapy backbone and resistant disease, three options. Mm -hmm. And insensitive, two options. Five chemotherapy backbones. Tell us about the other platinum sensitive chemotherapy backbone, the OCEANS trial. Well, that would be comparing uh, uh, platinum and GEM um, with or without bevacizumab. And we saw a hazard ratio there in platinum sensitive of 0 0.48, so mm -hmm. a very impressive hazard ratio with using that as well. But that's four months of PFS versus five months of OS. Is there any reason to use CarboGem, BEV, and Platinum Sensitive? I, I get they're both labeled. Or is really the use of BEV and Platinum Sensitive disease really all about retreatment with Paclo carboplatin paclitaxel? Or? Well, I think you have to individualize based on neuropathy, what type of yeah. uh, alopecia. Patients alopecia. Yeah, and, and also hypersensitivity effects. reactions. So uh, you talk about five backbones, so the two non-taxane backbones for platinum sensitive disease both have significantly lower rates of HSR. And, and, what we, and that was actually a secondary endpoint in um, GOG 213, so we know what the, what the uh, incidence rate was in that study was around 27%. Okay. So it's not a trivial number. Right, okay. So that's, we can probably put angiogen to angiogenesis agents to rest. That's now the third indication GYN, mm -hmm. right? It's great. Three can, GYN can, can indications bring, bevacizumab in two and a half years. Go ahead. Just bring one thing up, and that, that is the definition of platinum resistant or platinum sensitive. Okay. And Go ahead. It, 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 it varies by trial and it varies by investigator. That's what I you bet, said. It's a I continuum. Bet, I bet, you, well, it is a continuum, but even the exact you know, is it, it, which platinum are you looking at? Are you looking at the, the first platinum? Right. Are you looking at the penultimate platinum? Right. So there's a number of ways that that, that can be looked at. And so when you're doing cross-trial comparisons, which Thank I know nobody in this panel would ever <laughs> is a bra. Uh, you know, you need to be aware of what the methodology was. Yeah. And that's very important.